Hey guys, welcome back to Fix It Friday. So this week we're going to be talking about the Nintendo 64, and this is certainly an awesome console to own and to collect for. However, if you try setting this up uh, using your original cables and plug it into a modern display, you're going to find that the video signal just doesn't look all that great. Um, this console just hasn't aged all that well, um, but fortunately there are lots of ways to significantly improve the video quality coming out of the Nintendo 64 to make it look better than ever before. So that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be installing Tim Worthington's N64 RGB. This is a mod which taps directly into the video encoder chip on the N64, and the output is really nice RGB that can also be made even more crisp with a deblurring option that you can toggle on and off. So let's get started with the install. Okay, so I'm just gonna briefly talk about how to take apart a Nintendo 64, just because there's lots of different types of screws and you do have to pay attention to where all of them belong. So I'm gonna start with this screw right here. These are security bit screws and um, you do need a special type of screwdriver to get these removed. And they're on the bottom of the shell. There's six of them and that just keeps the top and the bottom together. Thankfully, the tool that you need to remove these is super easy and common to get. You can grab it on Amazon. Okay, so then what I normally do at that point is just lift the entire shell off and I don't try to bother with removing uh, the jumper pack. I normally leave the jumper pack in because when you lift up the top shell, you'll take the jumper pack out all at the same time. Okay, so now we've got our motherboard right here and there's a couple different screw types. So there's these very long screws, there's two of them and they go right here on the cartridge slot. The next one in terms of length are these silver screws right here, and you've got four of them. Two of them hold down the power supply, uh, the power jack rather, and two of them hold down the multi-out. Uh, you've got these two very thin ones, and they go here where the jumper pack normally goes. Um, you've also got these two right here that have a lock nut, and they go here, and they help attach the heat sink to the motherboard. And then finally, you've got these regular Phillips screws, and those are all over the place. There's maybe like six or seven of them. You'll notice I don't bother removing the screws that hold the heat sinks in place. Uh, you don't have to, but if you choose to leave these in, then what you've got to do is you've got to take the heat sink off from the back to the front like that, like you're seeing me do here. You don't want to go the opposite way because you might lift these chips here and you don't generally, these are RAM chips, you definitely don't want to do that. So again, you can either choose to take every single screw out or if you want, like I said, you can you can go from the back to the front like this and, and you'll it'll all come out just fine. All right, so now that we've got our motherboard, let's go ahead and take a closer look. All right, so the first thing we have to do is probably the most difficult step in the entire installation. And so what we need to do is solder about 12 wires onto this chip right here. This is the video encoder that we need to tap into uh, in order to get all the necessary video signals. So there are multiple versions of this video encoder depending on the revision of the Nintendo 64 motherboard that you have. This happens to be an older revision, so it's a VDC NUS. For the later revisions, uh, the kit also comes with a flex cable that you can use, but for this version, uh, you can actually solder directly onto the chip. So, um, as you can see, I've got 12 wires that uh, also come with the kit. This is 28 gauge copper stranded wire, and um, I have them all tinned and stripped to a roughly equivalent length. And so, what I'm going to do is go pin by pin and solder each wire to a respective pin going from the top to the bottom. Now, this can be a bit tricky, um, and one thing that can be an issue is that if you hold down your soldering iron on the wire here, the heat is going to erode this um, insulation that's on each conductor here. So to prevent that, what you can do is you can use a set of tweezers like the ones I have here. So if you hold the tip of the uh, the wire right here, it basically acts as a heat sink and it prevents the heat from creeping up the wire and eroding that insulation. And it just helps your install be a lot more clean and consistent. So I'm gonna go on top of the chip like this and go point to point and solder in all 12 of these wires. Uh, you can also do it like so, where you come at it from, from this angle right here. Um, but I feel like you have a little bit more structural support if you just come up over the top, and so that's generally speaking how I prefer to do it. All right, so let's get started with that. OK, 
Okay, so I've gone ahead and finished that, and I just wanted to kind of tilt the console to an angle, just so that you could see where um, each wire goes, and you can see that there aren't any bridges. So after you do this, if this is your first time doing it, I definitely recommend getting a multimeter and putting it into continuity mode, and then just testing point by point each of these pins, and just making sure that they're not bridged together. If you have something like a magnifying lens or a microscope that also helps, you can zoom in and just take a close look and make sure none of these guys are bridged together. Um, but that's about it. Once that's all set, then the worst of it is really over from here. And so the next thing we've got to do is just go ahead and take this set of cables here, this cable assembly, and just fold it right along the edge of where the capacitor is. <clears throat> Not too hard, just like a small crease like this. And it's going to go up along the multi-out, like you see right here. Okay, so now we're gonna flip over the console and we're gonna to get to work on the underside. Okay, so now we have the board flipped upside down and what you're looking at here is the multi-out. So this has the composite video, the S video, and <clears throat> five volts ground and stereo sound all going through this little port right here. So what we've gotta do is we've gotta add in our RGB. So normally RGB comes in on pins one, two, and three over here and then um, C-Sync comes in right here on pin four. With this uh, older revision of the motherboard, the components for C-Sync are actually gone. They, they would have been here, but they've been removed. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add this little uh, board right here. This is called the N64 Buddy Board. This is designed by Fraggle Tech. Um, and you can find him on Twitter, and I also have links in the description for his website and for his GitHub page. So he's made a variety of really nice little useful boards like this one that make installation of mods like this much easier and convenient. So this little board here fits right onto the uh, multi-out, and so instead of having to solder my RGB sync and ground wires directly to these tiny little pins here, this little breakout board just solders directly to the multi-out, and then I have these much larger pads here on the side, which just makes the whole process easier and, and more accessible. You'll also notice that there's two jumpers over here. So these jumpers um, basically control where sync is coming from. So if I bridge jumper one, then sync is going to be going to the composite pin, but Really, we don't need that composite video. If you're using that as a sync source, it's already here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna close jumper two right over here. And closing that means that whatever gets wired up to sync here is gonna go to this pin right here, pin three. So let's go ahead and solder this in and get our RGB ground and sync uh, connected up. Okay, so we're going to get started with reassembling the console, and so the first thing I'm going to do is just take the N64 RGB and mount it on top of the heatsink. So you just got to remove this adhesive right here, and then the double-sided tape will keep it stick down. And just make sure that the console is nice and clean. Uh, this one is in really great shape, but you know, it just depends on your on your uh, N64. But you should definitely make sure it's nice and clean before you tack this thing down. The other thing we've got to do here is there's a little little flap of metal right here and this gets in the way with the uh, the wires that are going to be coming from the video encoder so all you got to do here is just get a pair of pliers and bend this and it should come off without too much difficulty and then at this point you can just flatten it out just to make sure there's no spiky sharp edges on it all right so let's go ahead and partially reassemble the console all right, so I've got the console partially reassembled, and now we're going to go ahead and take all those wires coming from the encoder chip and solder them directly to the N64 RGB. So <clears throat> you'll notice over here there's a series of pads, and these vary depending on which type of encoder you have. This console has a VDC, so the older style encoder, so we're going to use this column of pads right here. You also have to keep in mind which pad is pad 1 and which one is pad 12. So in my case, I took a photo and I kept track, and pin 12 was this red wire right here, and that's ground. So we're going to loop this around like so, and I'm going to be soldering it in like this. So I definitely did shorten the cable. The, the wire was like 
much, much more. Um, just, you know, cut it to the length that you feel comfortable with. If you're not um, professional, if you're not doing tons of soldering, give yourself more length um, just to give yourself a uh, buffer in case you make a mistake. So I cut all of these, I tinned them, and now let's go ahead and solder them directly to this pad. <laughs> So now we're going to go ahead and um, install the RGB, the ground, the sink, and then we also need to add an additional chassis ground over here. So what we're going to do is I just lifted up this one screw here, which holds the heat sink in place, and I have a long piece of copper, of stranded wire rather, and I'm going to go ahead and solder a portion of this and then wrap it around the, um, the screw hold it in place, and then solder it to this ground pad. This just gives us extra shielding for the video signal. Okay, so we're pretty much done here, and the last thing we need to do is add the de-blur switch. So this switch is also available from Tim Worthington's website. It's um, a double pull switch, and so you can see I've soldered two wires to it, one in the middle and then one over here on the edge. It really doesn't matter which edge you pick. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this uh, 3D printed bracket, and this was designed by Dragon's Horde Gaming, and I can put a link in the description for uh, the file if you want to print it yourself, or you can have someone print it for you. And it's perfect because it allows you to use the switch and you don't have to make any kind of cuts to the shell. Basically what you gotta do is just press fit this in, like so. And you can see it fits flush against uh, the printed part. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna slide this right in over here and it's gonna be held in place uh, with the screw that used to go right over there. Okay, so that's attached and the switch is right in place and can be easily toggled back and forth to activate or deactivate the de-blur function. So now all we've got to do is take these two wires here and uh, solder them to ground and to this pad labeled A over here. So I, 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 the, the pin that's soldered to the middle here is black, so I'm going to solder black over to ground and then the one on the far edge is white, I'm going to put that here on A. Okay, so we're back and ready to do a preliminary test. So right now I have SCART cables plugged in, um, but this mod is also compatible with HD Retrovision cables as well, if that's the kind of thing you wanna use. Um, all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and power it on and let's take a look. All right, looking good. So I can tell already that the de-blur function is turned on because all of the pixels are really, really sharp. So I'm gonna go ahead and toggle that switch rapidly and take a look at the 2001 Nintendo right there. 
and now it's on, now it's off, now it's back on again. So you can really see with the text that it goes from being blurry to crisp when the deblur function is on. And most games look much better when this feature is activated. So yeah, overall this modification was a success and this Nintendo 64 looks better than ever. So if you like this kind of content, then definitely consider subscribing to the channel. I have videos out like this all the time, like every Friday. And then of course, if you've got a console that you want modified, you can contact me directly at oneuprestorations.com. All right, guys, thanks very much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.